Um, I'll start with Rochester, New York. Uh, I was going to school in Rochester, New York, and um, there was a band there called Personal Effects, and Personal Effects was um, Paul Dodd and his wife uh, Peggy Fournier, and uh, Martin was in the band and a few other people, but um, they were, you know, one, one of the bands in Rochester, and this was kind of at the the, the, the tail end of the whole new wave type stuff. And um, we, we got along pretty well. Um, I did some photos for them, some videos for them. They played at a place called, they, they played at a place called Scorgies, which at the time I thought, I, I was in college and I, I'd been in some bars, I'd been in one or two bars before then, but um, Scorgies was um, by the river. Scorgies was by the river, uh, the, the Genesee River, and it um, was upstairs and downstairs, and the bands played downstairs. Uh, anyway, it, it was a, a great, uh, a great bar. I found out later that actually Rolling Stone magazine called it like the, the coolest bar of whatever year it was, 1983 or 1984, which. If I had known that before, of course, it would have been a very different thing, but it was just what you'd want in a, in a bar. I mean, jukebox upstairs, uh, friendly people, but not too friendly, unusual, but not too unusual, um, and, a, and a lot of good bands. So there was a, uh, a circuit then of, uh, this is before the internet, of course, so there were a lot of uh, bands coming through, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this is not so interesting. Um, so after... Well, but uh, personal effects, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Made some videos of cramps. Okay, when I went from, when I was in Rochester, there were a lot of bands there, and um, one of the guy, a guy who was in a band, his name was Pat, and Pat and I became friends, partners in crime. Um, Pat Mosciano, and uh, this is just a short road trip to to see. Uh, the Clash and Black Hulu in Toronto. Rochester is here, and then you go around Lake Ontario, and you're in Toronto. <laughs> anyway, somehow, somehow, by the time we, we left Rochester, it's about a three-hour drive. Anyway, we stopped in Buffalo and saw some bands there. And uh, then we stopped to pick up some girls, some friends of Pat's, and they were all named Sue. So we were in the car and there were three Sues and I was going to see a girl named Sue. So, so she wasn't one of those. She wasn't one of those. So it was okay. the car full of Sues is <clears throat> the, the phrase there. Um, Pat, so Pat and I were good friends. Pat lived in Rochester. Pat drove me down to Manhattan uh, and you know, I, we were staying in Brooklyn, and one day we were waiting for the train. And I said, Pat, you know, wouldn't it be interesting, or maybe somebody's done this, a movie about you're waiting for a train, and then somebody goes by, and it's somebody that's important to you, a friend, a lover, whatever, and you, 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 you know, one gets on the train and the other one gets off the train. So just kind of a comedy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, of course, four months later, Pat came down to, to New York without telling me he was going to surprise me. And it was a Friday or Saturday night, and I'm waiting for the train, and who do I see in the car but Pat? And <laughs> luckily, we made it clear, I got on the train, and then we went to a concert. It was the Cramps, and uh, my roommate's band, my roommate, in New one of my roommates was in a band called Three Teens Kill Four and they were opening up for the cramps at a place called the Peppermint Lounge. So, anyway, since this is about music and independent music, I mm -hmm. thought I would tell this story, which may be interesting. Yes, yeah, very interesting. But the fact that we were talking about that and then three or four months later, that exact same thing happened, but it worked out and we went to see a show. Yeah, unbelievable. But this is very you, your coincidence. Well, okay. anyway.